This one is for everyone who was ever made to feel or feels that God is calling them to stay in abusive relationships or has been in an abusive relationship before and may be considering going back to that person or thinks perhaps they're not meeting Christ's standards by not allowing that person to dominate, subjugate, and rule over their lives, whether male or female. Today, the Lord put a word on my heart to share with you all that God does not want you to be in abusive relationships. It was never his intention for you to be in them, though he may have allowed them for your growth and to bring you into deeper levels of surrender to him as he did with me. He doesn't cause abusive relationships and he doesn't call anyone to stay in an abusive relationship. In fact, we're just to learn our lessons in them, get out, get clear, and get more free in Jesus. So I pray this video empowers you to do that today. Whether you're still connected to such people in the actual world or just in your inner worlds, in your heart, mind, and emotions, otherwise known as your soul, I'm going to express to you the way that you can truly break soul ties in a way you may have never heard it before. I think the best line of scripture to support this and to sort of contain this teaching today would be whether you're male or female, she is cloaked with strength and dignity and laughs without fear of the future. From Proverbs 31, 25. Now this verse was really important to me in the beginning of my walk with Christ in the beginning of his spirit dwelling within me. It caught my curiosity and I prayed, Lord, make me into that woman, make me into that person, because it's not where I began. When I began my walk with Jesus, I had been deeply humbled by relationships of domination and control and power dynamics that were of the world and its fallen nature and its brokenness. It was very painful, it was all I really ever knew. But one of the deepest things I had to realize that really truly fully empowered me was that now as an adult, I was choosing those relationships and choosing to stay in them. We can take the Bible and its teachings and feel like we're never allowed to get divorced. We're never allowed to leave an abusive person unless there's adultery. But that's what happens when we stay on the surface level of scripture, when we haven't fully submitted to Christ in love, which has nothing to do with power, control, subjugation or worldly rulership that dominates over us, but servant leadership of unconditional love, love himself for God is love, lifting us up into empowerment and total freedom through Christ Jesus who said, come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you for I am lowly and humble in heart and I will give you rest for your souls. And many people in the church and out of the church have not submitted to the true headship, which is love in Christ Jesus. The religious system itself is structured like the world systems where we have one person at the top, whether they know it or not, whether they have good intentions or not, and most do, though many don't, is usurping God's power. And many of those people with good intentions or ill have not fully submitted to the headship and the loving leadership of our Lord, our Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, which is so far departed from anything we know in this fallen world that most of us don't even know what it looks like. It's not to blame anyone, we just don't know because we haven't truly experienced it. But when I surrendered myself fully to Christ Jesus, it was because he revealed his heart to me. His presence descended from heaven and I invited him in. I invited in his spirit. I fully received him as Lord. And in that instant, held in his mercy, grace, and endless love and compassion like a tidal wave of love flooding down from heaven with no end, the rivers of living water himself in spirit. I knew that I would follow him to the ends of the earth and it was easy to submit and surrender to a love like that. All of God's children are called to submit in love to one another, but most of us think that submission means putting up with manipulation and abusive behavior. We may have been taught that in the institutions we were a part of, but I'm here to remind you, friends, that the church is not a building, it is the priesthood, a royal priesthood of all believers, God's holy people who are filled with his spirit. And how do we become filled with his spirit? There's that initial time when we are saved, but then there's a rebirthing process called sanctification that happens over time that requires submitting our flesh to his cross, offering it up on the altar of his cross. And we may have gone to a certain degree with that, but unless we see that as a continued lifelong process, we're never going to truly mature in Christ. 
And so there are a lot of immature believers, no matter how many decades they've been walking with the Lord, who haven't truly led him in to do their work in them. And they're still trying to overcome those patterns by their own fleshy willpower. But the flesh cannot overcome the flesh, as the Lord gave me the other morning. Only his spirit can overcome the flesh. It's more a process of receiving, allowing, and surrendering to that love, that mercy, that grace, which is very gentle. His spirit is gentleness. As Paul said, should I come to you with a rod or a spirit of gentleness? The spirit of God is gentle and loving, lowly and humble in heart. And so we are also not called to submit to those who haven't submitted themselves to Christ. We're called to submit in love to one another. The way I put it is, I'm not called to submit to the authority and rulership of a man who's still a spiritual toddler and infant, or a woman. But I would call that a wounded Genesis 3.16 version of power, domination, and submission. When God said to Eve just after the fall, your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. Meaning he will lord it over you, he will dominate you, he will try to subjugate you. You will give up yourself for him and desire him anyways because men and women were made to come together. But that sort of dominance hierarchy and system has taken over all of creation. And so anyone who's still operating in that way, who's trying to lord it over you, whether they're male or female, who's trying to dominate you and subjugate you and get you under their control, is not a true follower of Christ Jesus. They may believe in him, but they do not know him in a deep, intimate way, the biblical sense just yet. They may have made it high in the ranks of power and authority in the institutional church system, and they think that's what gives them authority and blessing. There's nothing wrong with having good mentors, but true discipleship comes from the Holy Spirit alone. And a true man or woman of God has submitted fully to the headship of Christ Jesus alone. Him being the true head in all of us, every last one, no matter what we're gifted with or called to, merely a member, all meant to be co-equal, male and female. As Paul said, there is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, but all of you are one in Christ Jesus. A lot of people skim the surface of biblical texts about men and women and think that means women are always to be silent and subjugated by men. But if we really come to that one of those passages in Ephesians 5, it says... For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word, the word being Christ himself. She will be holy and without fault, it also says. That means that men are called to love women the way that Christ loves his church, but most of us don't even love the church the way Christ loves his church yet. The way he sees us is perfect and holy without spot or blemish. Once we receive him, he sees us like a love-struck teenager, sees his beloved. God created us to be his son's beloved. That is his eternal purpose from all time before the fall, when all of us were chosen in Christ Jesus to be a part of his glorious bride, his true church, not one that is muzzled and silenced and subjugated. That is not a loving relationship between a man or a woman or God and his bride, and that is not the way he operates. That's a legalistic interpretation that stays on the surface of the scripture and views it through the lens of a fallen human worldview that happened the moment they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil versus the tree of life himself, the bread of life, the living waters, Christ Jesus. The other tree being, we can do this, we can be good and not do bad all on our own. So I hope you can hear this with spiritual ears, friends. And so coming back to Proverbs 31, 25, she is cloaked with strength and dignity. I asked the Lord to make me into that woman because I wasn't back then and that's okay. His transforming work in me has led me there because how I got into those wounded relationships was putting my worth in other people's hands. God actually called me into a season of solitude with him that lifted me up that healed me, that helped me to truly form my full identity in Christ alone, to only be dependent on love and approval from him. And that has set me absolutely, utterly free from cycles of abuse and those dynamics of worldly, fleshy power and control in all relationships, and set me free to step into the purpose, the calling that he had on my life and my full anointing as well. And in order to do that, we have to be empowered. We can't just watch lots of videos about narcissistic abuse that talk endlessly about the narcissist without putting the power back in our hands and get us dependent on those people making those videos instead. Whether or not they have bad intentions, we are not to impute ill intentions to anyone's heart, even the people who harm us, because that can really harm us. It made me very, very, very sick. It left me with a critical spirit. 
where those people were ruling over my life long after they were gone. I've made a video about that. I'll link down in the description box. My goal is for you to be so empowered in Christ Jesus that you feel utterly free, lifted up on wings like eagles, soaring high, with the spirit beneath them, the spirit of love and goodness and mercy and grace and all of the fruits we read about in Galatians, the perfect picture of Christ himself. And when we submit ourselves in love to him, that's how we get to those high places with him. It is my belief and experience that the Lord is the only one who is meant to be our true shepherd. And when we allow him to, we can truly begin to thrive with Jesus. So I've created a wonderful new program that's launching soon. I have chills coming down from the top of my head because I got to that point of thriving in Jesus, allowing him to carry me through seasons of darkness, cutting myself off from abusive people, not hating them, learning to love them, but to keep healthy boundaries and a distance. And this program bursts forth from my heart like rivers of living water for you all to help empower you and him as well. I also have a free resource if you sign up below for my email list, my weekly witness email list, where I share deeper insights than I do here on YouTube and how Christ is moving in my life each week. And you can receive the free ebook, Three Simple Steps to Resting in God's Love, that will help you assess where you are at so that you can become more and more empowered in Christ by submitting and surrendering to His love, His authority, His rulership, His headship, which looks absolutely different than what we see in the modern institutional church system, even when those people have the best of intentions, friends. God bless you and keep you. May he protect you. May he give you the peace and strength to extricate yourself and cut yourself off through your mind, will, and emotions, your soul, from every person who's trying to drag you down, for every person that tried to lord it over or rule over you, as he said to his disciples, was never to be the way of his church, so that you can become utterly free in him, in spite of this world, and thrive with Jesus no matter what the outside world looks like, friends. God bless you and keep you until next time. In Jesus' name, amen.